Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the return of the SFM underscore official Twitch channel, also known as the Swordfish Motorsport channel. Uh, we're going to bring you the FM4 Spec Racing Series Season 41 Super Rot for the next couple of weeks, beginning with week number one tonight from Yas Marina South at night and the Homestead Road Circuit Alt. I'll be joined here in just a few minutes by Kiwi Chris, all the way from Melbourne, Australia. First, to get things off, we're going to say hello to Slow Motion Fire, who puts this whole shindig together. And I actually can't drag him into the channel, so let me see if I can rectify that. Oh no. <laughs> Alright, so we fit our first technical snag of the day. Uh, seeing if we can get that resolved so I can drag people between the channels here such that we can say hello to slow. But anyway, um, so the Subaru brought, it's going to be E-Class today, E300 in Forza Motorsport 7. Nice and slow, a little bit of power. Car is going to be a real handful for the drivers to drive even at low speed because the tires are pretty much non-existent. So that is going to provide some really good racing at the tight and technical Yas Marina circuit in Abu Dhabi as digitized by the kind folks over at Turn 10 Studios. Just waiting on qualifying to get started here, which allegedly is going to happen in about 10 or so minutes. Looks like we've got at least 15 drivers competing this evening. That number is likely to rise, and we'll kind of go from there. have to rejoin the lobby here. It's not quite cooperating with me. But let's take a look at the way in which we get into Force Motorsport here. So we're just loading things up now. There we go. I think I do have a super bot to get in. Let's see if we can say hi to slow now. All right, still not cooperating. Well, in the swordfish tradition, things go great until they don't. So we're going to hope that things will get back to how they should over the next couple of moments here. And hopefully we'll be able to actually speak to our fellow race organizer here. Slow motion fire. And he's working hard to try to fix things. And there's Kiwi Chris. Hello, Kiwi. Hello, hello, hello. I'm here. I'm so glad to hear your voice, man. How's it going? Uh, it's going very, very well. Uh, yeah, early in the morning, new apartment, let's do this. Yeah, so for those who haven't heard his voice in quite a while, Kiwi Chris, uh, one of the longtime Swordfish members, actually just did his last race at Le Mans with the team, so we're happy to have him with us still in some capacity. And uh, Kiwi, Yas Marina, that track should bring good memories of another series that you orchestrated recently, Ripa. Oh, yes, the uh, only race where I think I led, led the opening lap. Yeah, yeah, held on for a lap, and a lap of magic it truly was. Um, so right now we're just in a holding... Yeah, we're just in a bit of a holding pattern here, a slow motion fire trying to change some things behind the scenes so we can talk to some people through the event, as well as while we get qualifying set up, which should happen in just about seven minutes. So across the bottom of your screen, you'll see some basic information about tonight's event, including the commentators, myself and Kiwi, uh, what the car is, the Subaru Rot, and where to register for the upcoming rounds over on the FM4 subreddit. Not Forza Motorsport 4, FM4. So named because it originated on Forza Motorsport 4, and then they gradually made the switch to 7, I want to say about 15 seasons ago. Which sounds like a long time, but they do a lot of these, just like 6 a year. Basically a season is what, 6 weeks of racing, a week off, and then back in it, so... I've raced with these guys a couple of, couple of seasons back when I actually was a uni student and had the Wednesdays free. They're a great bunch of people and the racing is always intense and good good nature as well. And the fact that they pick a different car in the spec series essentially is great. Yeah, the thought process behind this is that it's supposed to be a car that the driver who won the previous season has wanted to race but hasn't raced before. 
So we've gotten things like the Formula Mazda, and now, uh, since I believe it was SGR Fluffy that won last time out, we got the Subaru Brat. Indeed. And I love the Brat. It's a great car. <laughs> it's not... Wait, are there... What? Oh, there's... What class are they going to take? 841. 84, um... yeah, my, my car is extremely illegal here. <laughs> I was going to say, um, that would be... I mean... I think I've done this up as a drag car with a, that does wheelies, but one yeah. of the last cars to be made in New Zealand as well. Really? I didn't know that. I actually wasn't aware of any cars really being manufactured in New Zealand. That's uh, an interesting little tidbit there. Yeah, they uh, made it in somewhere in Europe, in Japan, and New Zealand, and never actually sold it in Japan. That's really weird. Was it not road legal in Japan? Um, I... I don't know, I just, I think they just didn't, I mean, you could get it, could get it as a grey import if you wanted. Hmm. Alright, well, well, if anyone happens to know the answer to that question, do let us know in the chat here, don't be afraid to say hello. Um, so while we wait for qualifying to get started, um, why don't we take a look at some of the liveries for the drivers that will be competing tonight? Uh, starting off with our very own Kratrium in the number 14. Yep, that's the, now all the liveries are based off what is it, fictional or extinct companies? Uh, correct, yes. They alternate each yeah. season. So uh, some seasons you'll have real-world sponsors like NVIDIA or Motul, whatever you have. And then some seasons you'll get fake stuff. So people will run stuff from The Simpsons, like Bin for Tools or Aperture Labs. Thing, you know, people have a lot of fun with it. So yeah, like and hear the fun this here. Is, yeah, th like this is going to be a case of spot the movie or spot the thing. Yeah, there's a lot of really creative things that go on here. L.S. Barney in the, I think that's Burger? I'm not sure quite what that's in reference to. Slow motion fire, the organizer. Uh, that's the airline from the movie Airplane. Yeah, they don't call me Shirley. All right, and we hey. can now hear him. Here's slow motion fire. How you doing, bud? All right, we cannot now hear him. I can see he's lit up, but I can't actually hear a word he's saying. All right, let's try this now. Can you hear me now? There we go. All right, there's slow motion fire. The man, the myth, the organizer. How you doing, bud? I am doing good. How about yourself? Eh, you know, existence is pain, but we're here to have some fun. Uh, here with my buddy Keely and uh, some really good drivers. Oh, there's always always good drivers in uh, FM4. Yeah, we were just taking a look through the list here. you got Sir Fluffy, DTS Mondo. You've got some heavy hitters in this field. Yeah, and then uh, just some regular Joe Blows. It's a beer league after all, so we're just here to have fun. Yeah, now you've been doing this back since, I want to say, 2014 or 15, right? On Forza Motorsport 4 is when everything got started? Yeah, some somewhere around there. I forget the official date, but yeah, it was clear back in the actual FM4 days, hence the name. Yeah, and then you stuck with FM4 through Forza Motorsport 5 and into 6, and then made the switch to 7 about 20 seasons ago. Is that right? Uh, yeah, probably something like that. Although we never raced in 5. We skipped over that one. Yeah. We went straight from 4 to 6. That's what I'm saying, yeah, because 5 was the, the doo-doo. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be the first time in a while that we've actually had uh, a weeknight series here on the SFM official Twitch. What sort of things should we be looking out for as we get through the night from the series that you so carefully run? Uh, well, it's spec racing, so in these slow cars, you're going to see a lot of door-to-door uh, -door racing going on tonight. This is very much a momentum car, so you're going to see some wild swings in the field as one little mistake will drop you five or so positions just because of that that momentum. So that's something I'd be looking forward looking for in this car tonight. And something else for everyone to take note of, there's two different number panels on the car. We have the green and the orange. They're denoted pro and am, respectively. However, it's not necessarily professional and amateur. Why don't you explain to us what that distinction means, Slow? Uh, yeah, it's real simple. The uh, pro drivers are drivers that have raced in the series before. The am drivers are drivers that are new to the series. So once they've ran for one season, they switch to the pro boards. And that actually does make a lot of sense, uh, just because I was looking through here and I saw somebody like a Larry B. the G had the M, but he is 
pretty quick. So before anyone got confused, I just wanted to make sure that was out there. Um, Kiwi Chris, what was the last season you participated in in this series? Was it the M3? It could have been. Um, could be good. That'd be a good couple of years ago now, I think. Yeah, so you could argue that you would effectively be a newcomer here in terms of things. If somebody is new oh, to the series slow, what's the best way for them to get involved? Like, let's say somebody uh, like Kiwi did want to race. Uh, first, you got to go to the Reddit page, reddit.com slash r slash fm4, and there you'll find the rules and registration. If you read through that, you'll kind of understand what's going on. There's a sign-up form there and also a link to the Discord. We kind of joke that the uh, Reddit is the business up front and the Discord's the party in the back. Party in the back. I love that. Well, it is 8 o'clock, so don't let us slow you down. You ready to get things rolling here? Oh, you know it. All right. Ready to race. All right, man. Well, good, good luck to you and all the drivers on tap, as they're so uh, eloquently referred to. And let's hope that we've got uh, 19 drivers here ready to rock, and that qualifying is nice and tight, nice and tasty. All right. Good to have you and Kiwi both in the booth tonight, and uh, we'll hope everything goes well. Cheers to that. All right, Kiwi. So we heard from Slow. We've seen some of the drivers in this field. Uh, who do you think would be the drivers that we should keep an eye on in terms of maybe sneaking a pole in here? Um, well, we know Floofy is always quick on one lap. And obviously, his descent, defending race season, he chose his car. He wouldn't have chosen it if he didn't know what he was doing. Um, he'll be quick. Uh, I expect we see good times as well. That's Fox Jason D. Yeah, Fox Jason uh, D, uh, I have seen him race quite a lot. He's been getting leaps and bounds quicker. So maybe yeah. he can pull a good lap out here. Yeah, and um, the other guys I race with, uh, Slow Mission Fire himself is actually not a bad racer in his own right. Uh, Foon Tang is in this lobby. He's actually a good bloke as well and quite quick. So it should be a really exciting three-lap qualifying session. I'm actually a little surprised to see Foontang not have a livery on his car. That's a little unusual for him. It's coming. Just yeah. he's got something extra special planned. Yeah, he'll probably uh, pull something out in the middle of the season. I know he usually runs NVIDIA colors when they do the real uh, real companies. Yeah, indeed. Now, tell me, are, these, are, are the Brits this year running, in this series, running the two seats in the back? Uh, to be completely honest with you, I have not actually seen the back of the car okay. for some time, so I do not know. I know that they are exactly. running a really low PI here just to make the car easier to drive, and it looks like we mm -hmm. are loading in. Yeah, we'll find out the answer to that question very shortly, won't we? Dun, 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 dun. Now remember, the qualifying here is extremely fast. You only get an outlap and two flyers because there's actually two qualifying sessions tonight. One at Yas Marina, then the race, and then a short intermission followed by qualifying at the other circuit, Homestead. And there's also a bit and of a stagger. Yes, they, they normally give five minute, a uh, five second stagger to make sure there's no traffic in the way. Um, okay, they're not running the seats in the back. That means they're paying the 25% chicken tax in America. <laughs> as opposed to 2.5% tax. That is uh, both horrifying and, and creative. It, it is. Hey, it's actually, it's actually a true story. You never cease to amaze me with your obscure that's knowledge, my friend. Hey, that's what I know. So the Yes Marina circuit, the South Circuit, pretty short. Uh, takes in a little bit of Sector 3. Or well, actually, it is all Sector 3 with a short shoot back to the back straight at the Yes Marina. Uh, should be very quick lap times and some great racing with a couple of hard braking zones and passing opportunities and plenty of room to run wide and if you get it wrong. Yeah, this track is extremely punishing for track limits as well. Uh, while we were waiting for the show to get started here, the drivers were lamenting how hard it is to get a clean lap together, and hello, DTS Mondo 2 wheeling it through there. Uh, heavy momentum circuit, so smooth, controlled inputs are going to be what you want today. And some of these cars are... Wait, is this a car or a truck, do you think? I'm not sure, because of the size. What is it called in Australia? Where we call it a ute. 
A you. I also know it as I also know it as Apollo. The road's gonna be fun car. A pile of relatively fun car. We're gonna go with that. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a ute, not a truck, because it is from Australia, New Zealand area. Riding on board with Kratrim here as he goes to complete the outlap. Now, generally speaking, as you go through an outlap, the drivers that start further back tend to immediately go to the top, just because that's how it works. You start further back, you can accelerate more, and you have a higher top speed coming into the first corner. So no surprise whatsoever that Kratrim has immediately gone to the top there, because, again, he started pretty much dead last. Take a look at some of the other utes as we go through the field here. TPR Sleepy. What does that say on the car? Thing from, um, yeah. May, May Queen, Queen Neon. What is that? Is that a Neon Cat thing? I don't know. It's, I don't, not, it's not a full really Neon Cat, so I don't know. I'm not sure where to look. There's so much action on the track here. What we got? Sprunk? That's the GT Grand Theft Auto uh, sprite knockoff, right? Correct, it is. Hence the vaguely vulgar name. And yeah. that's Barney in the purple and yellow thing. I want to find out what that is. You know, I was really uh, not even making that connection. I thought it was literally just Sprite, but I cannot unsee it now. Thank you for ruining my childhood. <laughs> DTS Mondo going to number one here. Uh, we'll see what that last time was in yeah. just a moment as it cycles through. Looks like most people on their outlap had a 121 somewhere in that region. Hornet's Ghost comes across the line with a dirty 118.7, and Mondo has a 17.472, but his third lap is dirty, so that is going to be it for Mondo. Kratrium goes to P1. Always nice to see our man up top. That lap was a 17.246. Fear the Fun is in third right now with a 17.8. Seeing a lot of dirty times cycle across here. That's very easy to do here. That stupid chicane that's been get, gotten rid of for Formula 1 dirty so many laps. Yeah, it's legitimately a very, very hard track to get a clean lap, and I think that is going to catch some people out. Just taking a look, it looks like Floofy as well has not yet managed a clean lap. Uh, see if that changes here at the end of lap number 2. And he'll only have one more shot as we go into the final lap. All right, so Floofy has now gone to the top with a clean lap. Obviously not four minutes and seven seconds. What is happening? Is he the first driver to set a clean lap? Uh, okay, so I think what happens, he was the first driver to finish the race. So that's why oh, it's displaying yeah. that time. So I have no idea what that lap time was. We'll see what it cycles through here. Because it changes what happened. The data that is shown to us changes as we go to the race end. So we're actually not going to know what that lap time was until we get through the end. We're going to guess it had to be faster than a 17.2 though, because that's what Kratrium had. So maybe a 16 from Fluffy. Speculation here. Oh, they do have the seats in the back, Huey. I thought you really? said they didn't. Look at, look, look at the car. It's got the seats. Well, they do, yeah. Okay, so they're saving the chicken tax. Yeah. And when you say chicken tax, do you literally mean chickens? Yeah, it was to do with agricultural UK, US and there's something to do with the import duty. Because when you put the two seats in the back, it becomes a passenger car. Ah. The import duty is 2.5%, not 25 Interesting. And I guess, were those seats easy to remove or were they very much attached? Oh, yeah. It was just Japanese, so probably like three bolts and away you go. All right, so we now have confirmation that Fluffy ran a one minute 17.174 second lap. Um, so that's pretty quick. That's very quick. Kratrium with the 117.246. I think third was still Mondo, 17.4. Uh, see if anyone else is in the 17s here. Fear the Fun with a 17.8. One that goes with an 18.7, but dirty. Ouch. Uh, Barney with an 18.1. Okay, so there's a pretty tight spread here. Most of the drivers hmm. appear to be in the 17, 18, 19 range, and then really all through the field there's going to be close racing because there's a bunch of guys all within a few tenths of each other. Let's see if we can talk to Floofy here. See if I can make that happen. Nope, not going to happen. Okay. All right, well, if anyone wants to come and say hi while uh, Slow gets things set up for race number one, please come and say hello. Love to hear from hello. you. Thanks, Kiwi. No problem. Um, 
I should also mention these cars. The good thing about this racing series, yes, we get severely, so no one takes it super seriously. And it doesn't matter where you are in the field, you're always involved in a race. I can remember, even though I'm five seconds a lap off the pace of others, I'm out the back and doing a race with two or three other guys. Yeah, that is kind of the magic of spec racing and spec racing with such a casual attitude. And here is the man of the minute, Floofy. Congrats on the poll. Thank you. Yeah, so you got a 17-1, but when you finished, it was showing us like four minutes and 30 seconds because it defaulted to the race time. Hmm. That's good. Yeah. So you've drawn first blood in season number 41, Subaru Brat. Why did you pick this car? Uh, why not? Uh, really? <laughs> why not? Well, you can't Something really argue with that, can you? race. Yeah. Uh, Nobody really wants to race a Brat, so why really? not do it? I know we used to use the Brat in Last Man Standing as a car that would get absolutely launched at high speed. That, that's true. It, it does do that if it ever reaches high speed, which these won't, unfortunately. Yeah, well, there's nothing really that gets you high speed like getting rammed in the butt by a Porsche 962, is there? That's true. Yeah. So obviously that's not going to happen tonight, but if you had to give one piece of advice for drivers that will be racing this season in this car, what would you say to them? Uh... Got to drive it like a rally car, I think. So what, off track everywhere? Uh, yeah, off track everywhere, on two wheels, on the roof occasionally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the how, I, how I drive yeah. normally, got it. Yeah. Well, and you uh, say how you uh, drive normally. Uh, what's the uh, most... What kind of car are you driving, Kiwi? How does it compare to the Brat? What, uh, in real life? Yeah, your real life passenger car. What, my pink, my pink Mitsubishi Mirage? Mitsubishi Mirage, oh yeah. You're ignoring the best part of that sentence. It's pink! Mm -hmm. I love it. It's great. It's fantastic. You know me. Yeah. So... Look, I, chose the, I chose the car, fiance chose the color. Very nice, very nice. Good compromise. Well, she's going to be using it or riding along. She, of course, uh, should have some input on the vehicle. Um, now, I understand it's very hot where you are at the moment, Fluffy. Do you think that's going to have any impact on your performance this evening? Positive or negative? Yeah. Oh it, oh, it already is. It has impacted it by zero practice, because I don't want the computer on. I am sweating continuously, which I tried to cool myself off with some beer, so we'll see if that helps. Well, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. I don't know if beer is going to necessarily stop the sweating. That may actually make it worse, but... Well, uh, that makes me cooler, so either way. <laughs> when you say warm, how warm are we talking? Um... It was 116. My room was, my room was 44C this weekend. My oh, bedroom. Lord. Yeah, it's currently about 37. All right, so for those of us in Freedom Units, 37C is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, yep. which happens to be the average human body temperature. So that which sounds is, absolutely is horrible. It is. It is. It is, yeah. So what's, what's the plan here? Win the race and then go take a shower between races? Ah, not worth it. Not worth it. <laughs> In the race, and then sprawl out on the couch with the fan. I think Slow is still sitting in the grid here, so we may have a little more time. Um, hmm. All right. So, who do you think is going to be your biggest quote-unquote rival through this season as we go through the calendar? Um. I mean, if we had to go by the pace I've seen so far, just in the rivals times and this little practice and qualifying session. It looks like Kratrium. Uh, Mondo, I think, has the pace. Maybe he doesn't quite have the tune set, or he hasn't practiced, which is a, the case for many of us. Um, yeah, right now I'm thinking Kratrium. Of course, as far as the McQueen shows up, then he's always a contender for the first spot. Yeah, well, we'll see if uh, McMeme does make an appearance. Well, I do think they are ready to get things rolling now, so uh, we'll say good luck to you for now, Floofy, and uh, knock him dead out there, but don't actually kill anyone. I'll do my best. All right. See you later, man. Good luck. And that was our little pre-race interview with SGR Floofy. I think we're ready to go, Kiwi. Are you excited? Because I'm excited. I'm extremely excited. This is going to be a great couple of races. And what, have we got 24 laps here, so 25 minutes of racing? It's going to be great. Uh, it's going to be, be a little fantastic. more than that. Because uh, plus they don't race the last lap, so it's going to be 23 oh, yeah. laps, and then that's it. Probably closer to 30, 33 minutes, roughly. Sweet. Settle in, grab yourself a frosty beverage, and away we go. Yeah. Gonna be... 
excellent racing, and I can't wait to bring it to you with my good man, Ted. Aw, oh, thanks, Chris. Nah. Yeah, there, there's a really nice image from the first time that uh, Chris and I met. We flew all the way from Australia to Daytona, Florida, and uh, we stood on the banking of the 24 hours of Daytona circuit, and there's a, a photo, and it's, it's a treasured memory. So I'm not sure what the delay is at this point in time. I think Slow is probably just briefing the rules of what needs to happen here or waiting for Modern Weapons to rejoin, because I do know that they said they were going to be making it for quali the race, but not qualifying. Uh, but either way, we're just moments away from the start of the first race of the 41st season of FM4 Spec Racing. And what we can do at this time... Oh, here he goes. Okay. I was going to do a grid preview, but that's not going to happen now. No, let's do this. Let's do this for real. So the start, the race will. St we just want to talk about how the race is going to start. After ten seconds, so the grid will hold for ten seconds. Then any time between t the tenth and twentieth second, Fuzzy can go. When he goes, that's the green flag. If it gets to twenty seconds, then he's fallen asleep. The race starts. All right. So it looks like it's going to be Fluffy and Crowtrim on the front row. Then DTS Mondo, Fear the Fun, LS Barney, Larry B the G, Tavarius, Kuda ninety three, Patches Riley, and Spears. Spryzows, I think is how you say that, in the top 10. So we're going to ride on board with P4, and uh, this is going to be a bloodbath, folks, but the fun kind, because the blood is beer, and the beer is transmission fluid from the Prats. And the vessel is a cracked dog glass from the 1980s. You know, that sounded a lot funnier in my head. <laughs> yeah, it did. All right, so we're just going to wait to keep an eye on the car of Fuki on the right-hand side of the screen. When he goes, the rest starts. He can, he can go into it. There he goes, and we're away. All right, so we should see a relatively straightforward start here because these cars do not really have much power at all. And I think, for the most part, everyone will be running the race clutch. So nothing too crazy here. Coming into turn number one, riding on board with Fear of the Fun. Looks like Floofy is edged ahead of Kratrium. Looking back, everyone seems to have made it through the first sector relatively cleanly. Some track limits and uses to be expected at Yas Marina. But it is Luffy from Kratrium, from Mondo, and Fear the Fun. Yeah, uh, really clean start there. Yeah, really well done, guys. First race of the season, you can always get a couple of heroes that try to make 17 passes into turn one. Not here. Yeah, I will say, I will say to the credit of the uh, turn 10 developers, the cameras at this track are much wider than some of the others, so we can actually see what's going on here. Indeed. We see uh, Fear the Fun actually sticking quite closely to the back of the car ahead. Yeah, you can just see his car doesn't quite have the same rear grip as the cars up front, just a little bit looser, uh, which will arguably make it very fun to drive, but slightly slower. He thought about the send there. Let's take a look further back in the field as we go through that final corner. Slow motion fire in the TA car. We do have a bit of a send there, a bit of contact between the two cars behind. Couldn't see who that was. That was going to be Il Mojave and Matman. I think I've actually raced against Mojave before in a Toro event. It's all Drex no, 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 overtakes no, 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 Fox no, 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 Jason man. D. <laughs> oh man. That was so bad, it was um, so good though. Oh yeah, and we see Slow making a move on the inside. We're trying to make a move on the inside, but he's... No, you might get he's it done actually. Under brakes and bypass a Dynaco machine, gets it done, yes. Yeah, that was an absolute dive bomb there, so thank you Slow Motion Fire. And I'll take a look up front here a little farther ahead. We've got a big old cluster of cars with LS Barney right in the middle. Cooter 93 behind, Savarius ahead, and there's four Utes all in the same block of real estate. And are we losing someone? Let's see what's happening here. No, no that, that'd be right. We lose someone just as the action gets really good. Oh, no, there's still two by two. Yeah, I think, all right, I think everything's good to go. Who is that? We got Barney, Savarius, Larry B, the G, I think, is at the front of that pack. He, we're going to go three wide under the, t under the hotel. Oh, that's going to get messy. And they've somehow that's survived. Good. Oh, big wiggle. And he saved it. So Varius with the huge out of shape moment holds it together and we live to survive another day. But he's not done yet. Still facing off a challenge there. Up the inside of LS Barney, they're going to take the drag strip down to turn number one and that's going to put Barney on the wrong side for turn one. But if he can hang on, he might be able to make this work. Well, we see these cars have to break along my back, so the a dive bomb is pretty effective, and there's plenty of room here to make it happen. He's thinking about it. Barney actually later on the brakes, but Tavarius sneaks through, but does not have the apex speed. Contact is made. 
Track yep, limits are right. destroyed, and Barney hangs on to fight another day. He's still there, though. They're still too wide. Still too wide. Let's take a look here. And this is allowing Larry to just eke out that a little bit more in front as one wheel. All right, I'm going to move back here to Tavarius. This is just too crazy. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're like, we have three wide. Three wide. Shoves Barney off the track on the inside. Kuda bails out. As we head under the... Um, is that the hotel or the conference center? It's the hotel. Okay, it's it is the hotel. hotel. Yeah. I wonder how much a room is for there for like the F1 weekend. Uh, if you have to ask, you probably can't afford to go there. That is sad but true. You just destroyed my life. Alright, it was Patches Riley that disconnected. P18. Hopefully they can make it okay. back for the next round. There's no worse feeling than the first race of the season. You spend so much time preparing and then you get three laps in. Does really stink. Uh, also, just taking a look at chat, Foontang stating that their controller died during qualifying. Um, so it oh. appears that I don't actually see Foontang in this race. Maybe they'll come back for the second one here. Moving a little bit farther down the field here, Audrex in the eighth position ahead of Cooter 93. So that big cluster truck <laughs> funds has allowed Audrex to move up a little bit. I think that cat is supposed to be a play on Puma. Chonk. I love it. Let's take a look up closer yeah. with that. Yep. Yeah, Chonk. Chonk. <laughs> oh, that's that the, cat. Uh... Whoa, got oh, someone stops. Modern weapon. He isn't last, so I don't think... I wonder if he's having control issues or something? Maybe just a wheel issue? Who knows? Maybe we'll find out after this race, but modern weapon well out of the things, well out of the running two laps. Uh, no safety cars in the series either, so he is gone. Mm. What a weapon misfiring in race one here. Also, Foon Tank stating that their controller died an actual death, not just batteries, so they are out for the night. Sorry to hear that, Foon. But up at the front, Creature was falling off a little bit. DTS Mondo and SGR Floofy, one and two at this point in time, with Mondo making some inroads on the pole setter. Number 320. Yeah, the, yeah it's going to be... Oh, very aggressive through there. He's actually made up a lot of time. If Fifi's run wide, this is going to open the door, potentially coming down the working section to under the hotel. Yeah, Mondo didn't exactly take the cleanest of lines through there, but Fluffy then messed up himself, so it kind of cancels out. Uh, heading in now hmm. to the hotel section. Really, really fun section of the track, no matter what speed you're going. Um, I remember I did a sports car race here in a GT car. It was a bit of a riot. Oh, Mondo with the cutback tries to get on the inside of Floofy. He's going to have a look. Coming into the left. Nope. Floofy slams the door, and we keep you. Does Uten work as a phrase, or do you say trucking? Like, that doesn't make sense now. No. Uh, being a bogan? Keep boganing. You boganing? Boganizing? I'm not sure. Oh, Floofy, a little bit squirrely there. How much do you think the slipstream would affect these cars? Um. Honestly, I'm not sure, because because of the low speed, it could be nothing, but because it's a brick, it could be a lot. Yeah, I, I don't see them both hugging the inside of the straight, straight. Yeah, I don't. Coming to the start lap six. I don't really see much of a massive speed difference playing its way out here, so I'm gonna go with probably not a whole lot. But we'll check back on this in a little moment. It looks like Kratrum has fallen back a little bit, as is Fear the Fun. Still within striking distance of the top two were to have some sort of coming together, but they are losing ground here. You just take a look at our map here and see that there's still that big old cluster of cars. Tavarius, Larry B, the G, and Barney still together. Audrex. And them's a big old cluster as well. Yeah, and that is kind of the magic of this series. This is how all the races tend to go. There's a couple guys that kind of run away, and then the middle is just junk everything all the vehicles. <laughs> so I was not intending to say the word junk. That was supposed to be more like a chionk noise, but it really didn't really work. On you lap 6 of 23 it. here. So that's... And that little cluster is 8th down... To, or ninth down to what, 13th? Yeah, I think, I think it's... Uh, oh, here we go. That so Kuda's ninth, and then Fox Jason D, Mojave, Born as Ghost, and Slow Motion Fire. Uh, relatively equal on skill. This group, oh, slow motion fire with the big Ooh. send there, makes contact. Uh, and that's going to send Borna's ghosts off into the next country. I think position maybe change again there. 
I don't know about that move. That was very aggressive. Yeah, he kind of went for it on the inside, and then I think Born may have gotten a little bit loose coming into the final corner and just kind of mm. used the expansive runoff. Here we go. Mojave. Ooh, here we go. Mojave. Mojave's obviously been a bit of contact as well. Look at his front end. It's bashed to Helen. Yeah, he also kind of completely missed the apex there and cut the next corner. <laughs> Desperation, That's maybe. Fine. Yeah. Was I just trying to read the Japanese on the side of his car? I think that might be the the uh, good old historic. I'm I, sure, I can read it. I lack the ability to read it, but if anyone does know, please do pop in a translation. Let's just see slow and ghost too too wide again. Let's take a look and back. Ghost position back. You got the position back there coming out of the turn before the hotel. Yeah. Now, Born as Ghost was actually in the first competitive leagues that I participated in way back on Ritter Racing in Forza Motorsport 4. Dude just destroyed us and then took a couple of years off from racing, uh, came back with his brother Skullshot, then took another long break and seems to have found a home here on the FM4 Spec League. Now, I think this will be a perfect indication of how much a slipstream actually works. Uh, Kuda is behind both of Utes ahead of him. And he's going to try and make it three. Well, okay, who's that? Wonder weapon finally on track. Yeah, okay. I think he may have rectified whatever issue he may have been having. And slow. Ah, Barn, what are you doing, man? Oh. Maybe. Oh, Kuda, he's going to oh, submit. Oh, oh still. Sp That's reminiscent of the actively crashing clip. Uh, to be referred to later on. But Kuda losing ground on P9 and 10 there uh, because of Barn's ghost intrusion. Pizza Planet, I believe that is. Why is it? Is that from Home Alone? What? No, that's Futurama, isn't it? I, I, I don't know. I'm gonna get yelled at now for not knowing Futurama. Here's the Wikipedia. Here's the Wikipedia article. Let's have a look. All right, you slow. watch the racing. I watch research. <laughs> slow motion fire. Uh, thinking about ways to get around Kuda here as we head into the final sector. Uh, Kuda sprunken his way along. That, that sound, I can't say that. Oh, up the inside, Warren's Ghost is going to get a much better launch onto the final straight and break into position number 10 ahead of Cooter 93, or position 11, rather. Well done. Um, God, we, well, that's a great move. We're terrible people, but it's actually Toy Story. Oh, unacceptable. We should have known that. Yeah. SM Sleepy still trucking along here. Sprezows started in 10th, may have had some difficulties there. Running a Pan Am livery, that's a defunct airline that set the standard for modern airlines for many decades until the 80s. Indeed, and I think it came back into um, vogue recently because of that um, series... Pan Am, the TV show. Was it a TV show called Pan Am? Yeah, it was a TV show about flight attendants. Or stewardesses, as they of, were called. I was thinking of the show The Flight Attendant. Oh, maybe that too. That's the one with uh, Kaylee Cuoco, right? Yep, great show. Recommend watching it. I, have, uh, I haven't given it a try, but I may, may take you up on that. And here we go. Fight for the lead. Mondo and Floofy. Nose to tail or bumper to bumper. Bumper to lift gate. Bumper to chicken barrier. Mondo thinking about going to the outside. Floofy heavy on the defense. Could he run too deep? Answer is no. Mondo is going to have to think about that one again. Oh, Floofy runs very wide. Contact is made. And Floofy's still ahead. I think Fluffy may have used the nose of Mondo to get around the corner there. Yeah. These cars are taking these you can get. We're going to go too wide into the right-handers. Mondo on the outside. He's going to have to break really late to try and get this done. This is a hard complex to get the pass done on the outside. And you can just see... Three right-handers in a row. You can see the stock tire compound screaming in protest. Well, Mondo with another cutback. No, no. Fluffy's just far enough ahead to save it. Just as around. Getting into the final couple of corners now. Floofy's still hanging on for Mondo. I think that's Kratrium just in the distance there. Still within sight range, but not quite close enough. And from the looks of things, we may actually start to see some drivers go all lap down right at the end of the race. So that could throw a bit of a wrench into this lead battle here. Uh, and of course, the uh, blue flag rules here are. Uh be sensible. Yeah. Uh, the short oh, version okay. is don't be a dick. Basically. Unless oh, you... oh, yeah, that is swearing, though. 
Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't consider that swearing, but... No, by Australian, by Australian standards, that's bloody just an average word. <laughs> and demonetized. Yes. <laughs> well, for bloody. Yeah. Alright, things have now started to spread out a little bit in that 5-6-7 battle, with Tavarius getting ahead of Barney from Larry. Uh, looks like things are really starting to spread out a little bit here. Uh, Borna's Ghost and, or not Borna's Ghost, Kuda and Slow Motion Fire now together fighting for the 12th position. And Sprunk prevails. Gets around the defunct airline. The defunct fake airline. If you've never seen the movie Airplane, I really do recommend it. It's hilarious. I actually introduced my fiancé to it. Oh, watched it with my fiancé a couple of weeks ago. She so thought good. it was hilarious. Leslie Nielsen. Rest in peace. Indeed. Um, we got another car stopped. Is that modern weapon again? I was gonna. Yeah, that's modern weapon. That's um, a I was gonna, bad spot to stop. Right at the exit of the corner. Uh, if anyone hits them, they're off track. They deserve to get a penalty. Uh, I mean, yeah, but that that could be bad. We'll see. We'll check in on that in a bit. Maybe he's just having some difficulties still. Yeah. I was I was going to say as well. Um, do you reckon the the uh, slow motion fire car has a blow up autopilot. Um, well, I wouldn't put it past him to try something like that. God, that scene, you could never, you could not Fox. do that scene today. No, you could not. You could not do that movie today. <laughs> no. Oh my God. It was, uh, yeah, well, the, apparently a lot of the actors in that film were not known for comedy roles, so it really threw people off when they went to go see it, which was why it was so funny. But nowadays, we another, just know it as just a standard, hilarious movie. Yo, know, another thing that my fiance and I have started watching is actually all the original episodes of Unsolved Mysteries. That's an old show. That's on uh, yeah. Amazon now, right? Uh, I think so, or whatever it's on. But the reason I bring that up is Robert Stack was also in that movie. He was an airplane. <laughs> I did not know that. Well, you came for race cars and you're learning movie trivia. Uh, Battle here on on this channel. Yeah, Battle for the lead still pretty much the same as it was before. The slightest of gaps between Fluffy and Mondo, who has finally taken turn one cleanly, but then doesn't take turn two clean at all. Uh, heading, continuing through the first sector here. I'd love to know what the track limits are supposed to be. Are they a little loose, or every man for themselves? Looks like Ron or Weapon's got it out of the barrier. The these, two, these two have just been nice as hard this entire race, and it seems like the car in second here is just taking every which way, trying every which way he can to get past, but just nothing's working for him at the moment. And with half, half the race gone, Ooh, that was a bit of a um, hearing moment. Going to take a, going to take an absolute dive bomb, I think, to get past Fluffy. Yeah, kind of running out of chances to make it happen here. Like we can clearly see that Fluffy's car is not as able to change directions quickly, but it does appear a little bit more controllable, and that is potentially how he's still hanging on to that top spot. Um, we know that a lot of the drivers post their tunes publicly here. I know uh, Creation, for example, topical switch post his tunes so others can try them. You know, slow motion fire will typically do that as well. Not sure if Fluffy does, but we could end up seeing a lot of guys running the same or largely the same setup as the season progresses. Yeah, CT's sort of in no man's land here. He's a good five seconds off the lead and a couple of seconds ahead of Fear the Fun who hasn't really improved or dropped back anywhere from that margin. Yeah, I don't think Fear the Fun has the raw pace to be able to close down the gap, but if CT has an issue or makes a mistake, he's right there. Uh, that being said, if you look at the map, those two at the back who are still battling right next to each other, they really could change the complexion of this race depending on how much awareness they have of the being overtaken. Now, we know the drivers all have their own comms, they can all talk to each other and hear each other, uh, which is both a blessing and a curse when you're in a competitive race. Because A, you know if you're being overtaken, but B, you know if you're being overtaken. <laughs> it's not like at Racing Tour of Le Mans when you're in a prototype as a GT and you in a different, different channel. Yeah, that can be a bit hairy, and uh, yeah. 
having just done Tor Lamai in the Lancia, let me tell you, you get absolutely whizzed by on the Molson straight yeah. by uh, the Group C car. But anyhow, Super Brat Racing going on right now. Ooh, Matt that in was, uh... Formula Drift here. <laughs> yeah, that actually wasn't a terrible lie. He um, didn't lose any time anyway. Yeah, it wasn't the cleanest. Oh, into what? the side of slow motion fire. I think we heard a bit of a lift there. Oh, missed, missed shift, it sounded like. This is his uh, first season, as we talk about the orange pet number panel. Yeah. Trying to trying to get, get one on this series moderator. That's not how you make friends in this series. <laughs> so how did your first race go? I crashed the organizer. Oh, I'm pretty sure I did that to you in my first race in Reddit Racing. I mean, you did, but it's all good. Actually, I'm not sure <laughs> if you did it that so long ago. What's, oh, look, I was five left standing in the Bentley as we see Matt May get the move done through whoa. the... Whoa! Uh, okay, whoa! That's, that's a big off-track moment. Yeah, I think that was a case of uh, absolute yeet there just to get through. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely no mercy no being taken there. That hotel is so ridiculous. It is a little, uh, have, as my sister would describe it, extra. <laughs> yes. As we have eight laps to go here. Out front. Is the battle out front really separated? Or am I misreading that? I think you are misreading that just a little bit, because Fufi oh, and Mondo incredible. are still, you know, within the same zip code. Okay. Yeah, it, it was me was shooting. I was looking, looking yeah. at CT's dot. Through that particular sector, it does tend to expand a little just because it's so fast, but through, through here, it'll close right back down. You can just see mm. Mondo is all over the back of Fluffy. You just cannot find a way through. He's tried Very going different wide. line through there as well. Yeah, he's tried going wide. He's tried going deep. He's tried going cutbacks, but nothing he does is sticking here. Oh, all right, this time he just tried to okay. go straight through him. Which, of course, I was going to say, about the only thing that, I bet say the only thing that is the bump and run. Well, here we go. He, this is probably his best chance for a while to hang with Fluffy into turn one and send it down the outside because there's no way Fluffy will give him the inside. Yeah, no, Fluffy's a nice guy, but he's not that nice. He <laughs> won't leave the door open. Oh, oh we say that. Oh, he's taking a he's defensive line. Right foot. So he's kind of compromising his exit a little bit just to completely prevent Mondo from having any chance at all of getting through, and it seems to be working well for him. But yeah, I think it's just been a massive defensive driving so far. And that has actually allowed Creatrium to gain about one second back onto the uh, lead group. He was about six and a half back, now I think it was like 5.3. Through the fun, no such luck, losing a little bit of ground. And well, here we go. Oh, he's, he's got him here. Nope. Oh, lifts out of it. Not enough, not enough of a run through that under the hotel. I don't know what the turn numbers are here, and I don't really care. Yeah, I honestly have no idea. It. So <laughs> yeah. this corner is now the National Bank of Abu Dhabi hairpin. It is so mm -hmm. christened because of the sign under the Yas Marina Bridge. Man, I mean, just imagine seeing a start of a race from that angle. Oh, that would be so sweet. Yeah, one of the coolest places I've ever been, Road Atlanta, there's actually a bridge over the back straight that you can walk over during the race. And you can see what, the cars right, go right under you. It's... What, right, Road right Atlanta? Yeah, Road Atlanta. Oh, wow, yeah. It's very fast, very loud, and you really do get the sensation of speed. But speed is not what we have here in the Subaru Brat. What we have here is absolute pain from the tires. Just look at them slide. Well, they stop, they're running stock tires, aren't they? So I'm pretty sure it's stock, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that the, the Brat would never have seen a race like this in this stream. Yeah, I think he's actually got a good margin now. Uh, oh, yeah, big mistake for Mondo. That's going to really impair him through this final section. You just see the wiggle yeah, going on. There as well. And, of course, there's no weight over the back, so those rear tires, it's just slip slidey slidey. Let's take a look at those rear tires if we can here. Wear 2.9% after about 25 minutes. Take a look at the temps, nice and cool. Only about 170 Fahrenheit. 
Uh, typically on a race tire, you'd see about 220, 230 through a corner, but not so much on this. There is absolutely no heat staying in those tires. No. Oh, oh and... Hit you, dude. Yeah, you did, did you catch that ahead there? Those two little no, dots in the here. distance? Oh, uh, yes, here we go. Here comes the overtaking. They're going to have to think about yeah. it in these last couple laps. Yeah, five to go. Um, they should be the only two lap cars they encounter. Uh, I guess as well, because this track is so wide and these cars are so tiny, comparatively, shouldn't be too hard to get past. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of space if you are very brave, but if you're conservative, there's no space. So like we saw Matt Man yeah. try it on Cuda, not enough room. But I don't know. Yeah, and of course, those two cars that are about to be left are in their own battle as well and have been all race. And then they're on the same straight. Who are those? Who are those two cars? Uh, it's going to be Sleepy and Spryzel. Sp ah, yes. Spryzels, Spryzeus. I'd, I'd love to know how that's supposed to be pronounced. Oh, here we go. Pass for the lead, maybe? Nope. Not enough speed. So one well, thing I'm, I'm not sure of is, does this car have a race box or not? I didn't actually look at the parts list because that could be affecting how this is going on the straights. That's another thing for many research as we watch this battle into turn one. Apparently deep under brakes, but not deep enough. Pronunciation is Sprizows. Sprizows in the house. Yeet. Oh, here we go. Okay, maybe not. Pure the fun. Kind of all by himself here. Uh, apparently his car might sound weird on stream. I'm not hearing it myself, but okay. Uh, we're going to stick with this battle for the lead right to the end here, because this is going to get crazy. And they're still door-to-door -door for last place. I love that. Oh my goodness! Whoa. Sleepy, hang <laughs> on to it. That's the last thing you need to see. Sleepy's like, get out of the way! Oop, a little bit of side drafting there, nearly contact with Mr. Jackson and Sleepy as we go. Two by Sleepy's going to get the move done on the outside. Oh, Mondo! He's on the inside. Oh, what a move! But and Fifi's got it done pretty easily. Yeah, Mondo got a little bit held up there by uh, P16, so he lost about two or three Ute lengths there. Mm. And now this is going to compromise uh, Mondo even more, because now he's going to try to get a bit of slippery nine Slippy, and the Sleepy. Slippy. And Abby on the brakes. Alright, so he's, Still there and he's got him. Let's move on now, finally. But yeah, the, the loss of that whole straight, essentially, from Fluffy is going to make a massive difference. If Fluffy can get a clean nap in here, I think this battle is done. Yeah, I don't... Like, we know Mondo's quick, but I don't think he's that quick to close this gap. 0.8 seconds in three laps. I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, P3 Kratrium may or may not have to deal with those back markers. We'll figure that out in a couple of moments here, just based on the map, but... I mean, there's really not much more those two could have done other than just break to let them through or, yeah. like, run wide in the last corner or something. Yeah, I think there was, there was nothing wrong with what anyone did there. It's just literally the worst corner on the track to pick traffic on. Yeah. The, the absolute dream when you're going to lap someone is to get them on corner exit out of a slow corner because you don't have to do anything. Oh, yeah. Going into a slow or corner, it's just pain. Yeah. Or if you're in a different class on the front strike. And Mondo has closed the gap. Okay. Here we go. Two Be laps to go. Best lap of the race, a 115.8 seconds for Mondo. Uh, questionable track limits to get that fast, but that is still pretty quick. And you're at a place with questionable track limits, so... You, I mean, that's why they've got the race regulations on, so you can see the barriers there to penalize any ridiculously cheaty driving. Let's take a look and see what the penalties are actually here. I think it may be set to uh, collisions only at this time. Hmm. Well, they were, they were going to ignore them anyway. Yeah, that's true. It's still interesting. Like, we've seen uh, in that uh, the late shift series that's been going on, uh, some controversy with the FRR, and some penalties being added and removed and added and removed and just a whole mess. But none of that nonsense here. This is the Beer League, and we've got a battle on our hands with one lap remaining after the conclusion of this one. Flu or, I almost called you Fluffy. Kiwi. Kiwi, Chris. Thanks, Simon. Um, we, they tell you what, Mondo's not going anyways. Ooh, that's a 
heavy abuse of track limit on entry and on exit. He's absolutely trying everything he can to get past Fuku as he comes to the white flag this time by. Honestly, I think Mondo might just send it coming in here. Like, yeah. he's got nothing to yeah. lose at this point. Just go for it, man. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, it's basically his last real outbreaking chance. Heading into turn one. Gets a good <laughs> entry. I mean, you can just see the direction change happening here. Roof cam, it's violent. Almost feel like I'm watching an old like core race with uh, Carl Renazetter, just all over the place. <laughs> I was gonna say this cam is really high up. Yeah, it's a little higher than I think it's meant to be. Yeah, the Super Bet, the Super Bet Ultra Lift Edition. Oh, Fluffy almost rolled it there, two wheeling it. It's gonna let Mondo get a much better run under the bridge. A couple corners again, left. He, yeah, this is his last chance. He has to send it into here, otherwise Fuji's going to get it done. He's close enough to send it. What's he going to do? Got the flick right and then the hard braking zone left, and I think Fuji's going to hold on. Uh, I'm not sure, because Fluffy had a compromised entry line there. Mondo is going to put the power down. Coming to the line, and it's going to be SGR Fluffy hanging on the tiniest of margins to take race one victory. Well done, Floofy. Third position we think is going to be Kratrium. Yeah, Kratrium just sails across there. Big gap back to Fear the Fun in the fourth spot. And then things get a little bit messy because we have a battle on our hands for fifth place. Tavarius and Barney. Looks like it is going to be Barney from Tavarius and then P7 and 8. Audrex does get ahead of Larry BMG, who holds off Mojave, and then Borna's Ghost rounds out the top 10. Then we go a ways back to Fox Jason D. Really had a quiet race from Fox. We didn't really see him uh, yeet or get yeeted, as they say. Just kind of did his own thing and brought it home a good spot. Swaling Green. Him is a better for the tanks as well. Yeah, this one could go all the way to the line here. This is going to be slow motion for uh, Matman and Kuda. And Kuda actually does get alongside, but I think it's a bit too late. 14 slow motion fire. And P15 is Sleepy, who has continued to race after... You're not supposed to do that, buddy. If you're a lap down, you're done. So you may have some words spoken to him at the end of the festivities here. But it's... We think Sleepy from Sprizaus and Modern Weapon takes up the Lear. The Lear? The rear. What am I saying? In Lear. Oh, that's a that's a great camera shot of all the cars. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. A nice field of truck ute cars. Truck ute cars. Truck ute cars. And, and here comes the pink machine. And I think that's everybody in line now. Yeah, Sleepy coming to a stop. And what we're seeing scrolling across the top here was, I think, the gap at the line, I want to say. Looks looks about right. Yeah, just got confirmation that Audrex did not make it to 7th. So there that you go. tight battle too wide, yeah. So yeah. that's... So that's that for a race run. That was a pretty good race, got to say. Yeah, it was a really competitive race. Didn't see a lot of passing at the front, but we did see a lot of sliding, a lot of two-wheeling, a lot of tire hmm. smoke. Very entertaining. What, what we saw was two guys at their absolute limit just pushing each other hard. And sometimes that's the best racing. It doesn't necessarily need passing. It's just people pushing each other as hard as they can. Yeah, let's take a look at slow motion fire here. Uh, he's a little beat up. The nose of that Oof. ute going to need some bodywork repairs before we head over to Homestead. And uh, the way that we get to Homestead is, of course, through a uh, Star Trek transporter because this is in the Middle East and Homestead's in Florida, and they've got to get there in about 10 minutes. Yeah, and I think there's a car sponsored by Star Trek here, so it's his technology. Is there? Who, who's who's sponsored by Star Trek? I don't, I, I don't know if it's here tonight, but I've seen that livery. I mean, we have seen uh, SGR, the slow motion puncture, which is a play on Star Trek, the slow the, uh, motion picture. Mm. And Fluffy has been released to finish the race. A little bit of a celebratory drift going on here. Congratulations again to Fluffy. 
Woo, there he goes. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's a great drift. SVG would be proud of that one. Not. <laughs> the shade from Kiwi. <laughs> hey, don't be hating on Gizzy. I'm not. I'm hating on Fluffy. Oh, savagery. Well, I want to see a proper drift, not this pansy stuff. Well, the thing is, I don't know if the car has enough power to properly drift. <laughs> oh, here he goes. Yeah, yeah. There, there we go. That was decent. There we go. That's better. That's better. Uh, oh! <laughs> Straight into the tire wall. <laughs> oh, dear. And that's going to allow Kuda to claim victory on the road. Congratulations <laughs> to the Sprunk driver. Oh, man. That was amusing. Uh, yes, it was. When you drift Congrats too hard. <laughs> All right. Well, we do have a driver in the interview queue, so let's say hello to uh, LS Barney, the rain expert. Barney, how you doing, man? Say again? I'm doing good. All right. So you just finished in, what was that, seventh or eighth position, I think? Again, say again? You're cutting Fifth out. Fifth place. Fifth place. There we go. Um, so you seem to have a pretty good handle on that Subaru Broad. How do you think the car was handling relative to your expectations tonight? Um, it wasn't too bad. It felt better in the test and tune and qualifying, but during the race, it just, for some reason, I just couldn't find the pace out of it. Yeah, well, for not being able to find the pace, P5 is a pretty respectable result. Uh, we saw there was a bit of a tussle between you and uh, Tovarius, as well as a couple of others. Uh, how was that battle unfolding, do you think? Um, it, it was a good fight between me and Larry and Tavarius. I think, really, I just got caught, caught out on the start. And ended up um, ended up losing a position to Larry. Tried to take it back. Um, ended up slowing me down and then put me behind Tavarius. So initially it was it wasn't fun to be stuck behind them. But I think by the end it was it was a good battle for me and Tavarius at the end. So it kept it kept me awake. Yeah, we were definitely uh, early on in the race. We were taking a look at that and it looked very spicy. So the car it does not have a lot of power. Are you guys allowed to adjust the gear ratios? Yeah, we're allowed to adjust the gear ratios. I think most people are going with the shorter gear ratio. I'm personally using a longer gear ratio for the final drive. So that way I'm just getting like longer without having to shift and lose the, um, getting out of the power range. So I think just, personally I say longer gear, gear ratios in the final drive works, but I think most people would say I'm wrong. So you've just got a sport box on there then? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So we're only allowed to mess with the final drive. We're not allowed, not allowed for the individual gears. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so I guess that that helps to keep the tuning requirement down a little bit, make things a bit easier as we uh, kind of go through the tuning. Uh, Kiwi Chris, um, you were mentioning a lot that uh, the brat uh, had some chicken-related import things. Um, yes. Barney, if you had to sell a chicken to Kiwi, how much would you sell it for? I had to sell a chicken? Yes. A chicken. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a chicken expert. Um, $50 maybe? I mean, that's supposed to be shipping down to Australia. <laughs> oh, if we're going to Australia, maybe a hundred. <laughs> hundred dollars for a chicken? You're probably really yeah. confused. So, Kiwi, can you please explain what on earth that question was about? Because, the, because of the back seats. The, the, when these cars were imported into, into US, they only had to pay an import tax of 2.5% and avoid the chicken tax because they're not commercial vehicles. This is oh, apparently so a completely real thing. So you weren't talking about like actual chickens? Yeah, it's called the chicken tax. Yeah. Why did we not have a chicken tax on this car? Because it has seats in the back. Oh, well... Where else would the chicken sit, though? Well, no, the, the thought is you'd, you'd put, like, agricultural equipment in the back, but you can't because there's seats there. I mean, you still can. Can you, though? You could try, at least. I'm sure someone has. You can also <laughs> just take the seats out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but this is one of the great mysteries of the automotive world. All right, so Barney, uh, we've arrived at Homestead here. How are you feeling about the run up to qualifying? You feeling confident? 
Uh, yeah, it's probably one of my stronger tracks. I know this track pretty well from the 10 hours, to t yeah, the 10 hours of Homestead that Tora did. So I'm, I know this track very well. It's just getting used to the track with this car specifically. But yeah. I think this should be one of my stronger performances of the season. Yeah, I'm so glad to never drive that track again after that event, especially with the interesting pit lane entry. Um, are you going to be running a high line or a low line through the final corner? The bank's um, turn. The final corner, I'll probably be just running whatever line the car feels like, because I have no clue what's going to be fast in this car. All right, well, whatever line the car feels like is an entirely respectable, reasonable answer. And I uh, hope that you're able to hang on to it and get a good starting position. Uh, any parting Thank words you. before we move on to our next interviewee here? Um, to various, it won't be as, as, hard, or as easy to defend on me this time. I'll be better. Oh, we got some trash talk in. He's going to defend hard. All right, well, good luck to you, Barney. And uh, hopefully we'll see you repeat a top five performance in race number two. All right, thank you. I waved, and I don't know why. You waved? Like, you physically waved <laughs> your hand? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, you, you must have some Italian ancestry, because whenever my mother's on the phone, she's always, like, waving her hand around or gesticulating. It's just a thing that people do. It is. All right, three laps here at Miami, or two lap qualifying. Miami, we're on the alt circuit and the road circuit, which is a great little circuit actually. I love this place. Yeah, no, it's it's a really fun underutilized track. It's just super frustrating to race on because of that pit entry. Um, if whoever starts first has the probability of not actually stopping in the pits. So what we did to get around that for the enduro was we just had a pace car in every stint, which was interesting. But it looks like qualifying is now underway. So, any predictions, Kiwi? Um, I can't see the result changing too much from the first race. Uh, the high, the longer final drive might come in handy here. So those who've set these cars up for a bit of a higher top speed, as much as these cars have a top speed, might find themselves in a better position. So I don't think we'll know the answer to who's going to be strong for another five minutes. Guess we'll find out. Looks like Fox Jason D drew the lucky, uh, I guess we'll call it the long straw, short straw, to go off first here in qualifying. So just as with Yas Marina, outlap two flyers. Again, qualifying really not the focus of tonight's festivities. The race is where the drivers are really going to care about here. And here goes the outlap. So question, soil... What is Soylent Green? Like, what is it? it it's a green that's Soylent. It, it, um, is it people? Was that Soylent the fun green. movie? Yeah, so it's, um... Yeah, well, it's a movie, obviously. Duh. Well, I've never seen it. I've not seen it, which is why I'm asking. What is that sticker on the back of Modern Weapons car? I can't tell. Um, that could not be... Mayfield? Uh-huh. I'm... What? Perplexed. Anyway, no, enough of that. We're going to... We're into the high-speed... High-speed banked oval section now. These cars... I don't think they have to lift through the... Oval between three and four. Uh, let's find out. And of course, the speed has, of course, not loaded, so we actually don't know how fast they're going. There we go, 107 100. miles per hour through the bank corner. Oh, yeah. Here's the speed, NASCAR. That's what you need to do is mix gen. It's a great dream. Hug the low line there and then swing it back out wide. 117 miles an hour into turn one. And is he no, going to make the corner? One. So, turn one at Homestead, if you miss it, you will go sailing into the outside wall, and you will die. Yes, I've done that numerous times at this place. It's uh, it's not a pleasant crash, because as soon as you go off, you immediately know, like, yep, I have done effed up, and yep, there is and you know nothing you can do. <laughs> yep, yeah, it's like, yep, I'm about to crash in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, there we go. The only real question is, do you want to have four wheels on the ground or no wheels on the ground? Because you could just roll it into a flip if you really wanted to going through there. Yeah. Which is spectacular, but probably not great for your race car. No. 
Um, looks like we'll get to everyone's now on their first flyer. Oh, fear of the fun! Oh, he almost went off turn one. <laughs> he did. He did. He's off track there. Oh, he went off, but he didn't truly get the full experience. This is true. Number 67 there. Uh, so he'll have, he'll have one more go at it. He'll probably back himself up a little bit and go for it again. Yeah, just catch the breath, calm the nerves, and prepare yourself. Mm. So the critical corner here is obviously turn one and the corner leading onto the banking. Because once you're up there, it's, it's good, what, 40 seconds of full throttle. Yeah, especially in a slow car like this, you really need a nice, really sharp, almost a sharp entry. You kind of want to run it deep and then turn around. Mm. Because it's quite a funky hairpin shape as well. Yeah, it's really not the most well-designed layout of a track that I've ever seen. But considering it's mm. inside of an oval, I think it works pretty well. Um, yep, FIA GT so has raced here, SCCA, uh, Tora obviously used it virtually. Mm. But I'm not really um, aware of any other professional leagues that have run this particular circuit. Yeah, I think we just saw CT go to the top of the times before as well. Um, this is still coming through. Yes. Kratrium is currently P1 with a 141.207 ahead of Audrex 141.207. Oh, and I say that well, as Mondo. Mondo's just this destroyed that at 141. 41 0. Yeah. Uh, where is Fluffy in all of this? Has he gotten a clean lap yet? Uh, answer is maybe. Yes. <laughs> He's on the pole there with 40.8. There, there he goes. Yeah, I was wondering where he was. Alright, so it's Fluffy, Mondo, Kratrium, Audrex, Slow Motion Fire. The current top five. Uh, I'd be amazed if anyone else got in the top three at this point. Uh, Audrex maybe actually could get it done here. He's close enough, only less than a tenth behind P3. Um, good quality from Slow Motion Fire right now, though, in fifth position. That's a great map. Ooh, who's that out there wide in the grass? That was the uh, Matt Man 24-24. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he's still on there, so I don't know what he's doing, but... I think he, I think he decided, ah, I'll have some fun. Yeah, just trying, to, flag, so. just trying to get out of the way, I guess. Mm -hmm. Or is he damaged Going, that oh. car? Transmission damage. Ooh. Ah, push that clutch, Pedro. Yeah, he must have missed the clutch there. Yeah. Alright, well, the driver's so we hard. a minute left. Well, yeah, they're crossing the line now, so it's really just a matter of when uh, the last driver on track will cross the line. I think that's Larry B of the G. And let's ride on board with Larry from Allied Forces Racing. See where he ends up. Yep. In the Amateur Labs sponsored machine. And Audrex yep. did beat Kratrium. Oh, wow. So it's Fluffy, Mondo, Audrex, Kratrium, Slow Motion Fire, your current top five. We're going to see where Larry B. The G slots in in just a few moments. Now, if Larry was smart, he'd stay low because it's the final lap. And we may actually not get to see the... There it is. Okay. So, so. come across the line in... Oh, now yeah, because we have to do it this way. All right, so... Let's take a look and see what his time was. 41.7. Not bad. Oh, fear the fun. Forty-one-seven, but it's dirty. That that really hurts to see. I'm sorry, buddy. Uh, so it's gonna look like it's gonna be. So so much is forty-one-six is gonna hold up quite well. Uh, so it looks like it's Mondo one pole. Uh, yeah, I do think it is Mondo. Um, no, Fluffy. Fluffy's on pole. Forty point six. Oh. 40.6, okay, Fluffy got it. Yeah, so Fluffy on pole, then Mondo, and then it was Audrex and Kratrium. And it looks like we have somebody who wants to talk to us. So here is T-Phrase. How you doing, bud? And the answer is muted. And he's gone. False alarm. Great chat. Thanks for stopping by. Always happy to hear from T-Phrase, especially when we don't. Especially when we do. Yep. All right, let's try this again. T phrase, can you hear us? But you're muted, so we can't hear you. All right. Well, he figures that out. 
Sprizows, how you doing? Can I say your name right? All right, he gets bounced out. <laughs> so, uh, people don't want to talk to us, Kiwi. What did we do? Did we say something offensive? Or have we been canceled? I mean, I mean, I've probably said something offensive already. Yeah, let's try again with Sprizows. Sprizows, can you hear me? Sprizows, can you hear me? All right, apparently not. So we're gonna try again with T phrase. T phrase, can you hear me? Sprizows, can you hear me? All right, well I can hear myself through you. Apparently not. So we're gonna try again with T phrase. Rather but delayed. I just have T phrase, can you hear me? Hello. Hey, there he is. <laughs> How you doing, T phrase? <laughs> That was just a car crash in slow motion. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. I'm on my phone, so therefore I have to hold it up to my ear because apparently my phone doesn't know how to go to speaker. Ah, that's not good. Um, so how you doing, man? I, know, I didn't see you racing today. Are you going to race the next rounds? Uh, maybe. Uh, I just did it because I saw it on there and I was like, you know what? I got nothing else going on. Let's jump in. And uh, so I put a Praetorium tune on, and those three laps of qualifying are my three laps of practice. Oh, you are actually. I didn't even notice you were in there. Okay. Well, uh, welcome to the show. Yeah, I'm excited. I, I mean, it's been a minute. What is this? 41? I think my last one was like 29 or maybe 30. So it's been a it's been a minute since I've been on this. Yeah. Now, uh, Kiwi Chris, I don't think you've ever actually had the pleasure of speaking to the fine T fruits here. Uh, but something tells me you guys would get on like the gangbusters. <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds like a really, really fun chap to have a beer of 75 with. I'm just a, a car nerd redneck from the south. I mean, that's it. Hey, you're fitting well in our country, that's for sure. <laughs> Stray you, mate. All right, looks like we lost yeah. LS Barney here from the lobby, so we've got a minute or so here maybe before we get started. Um, so T-Phrase, you're going to be rolling off in the, what is that, one, two, three, four, like eighth position, I think? Something like that. I don't even know. Ninth, tenth, or eleventh, somewhere in there. Eighth Where position. Where they want to put me? Yeah. So we'll see uh, how that turns into result-wise for you. Um, you said that was your first three laps in the car, Ute truck, vehicle. How do you think that your race is going to pan out? Well, if I can hang on to it, learning how to throw it in there in turn one, uh, it's a real slidey boy. So. If I know this track, which I, I know it pretty well from the um, endurance races we used to do here, um, they uh, if you get a tire in that grass, you're gone. So I'm just going to try to stay away from that grass as much as possible on that right side and, you know, see what happens. I'm not expecting to go any farther, but, I mean, if I can take advantage of some misfortunes from some guys in front of me and maybe not get eaten up from the guys behind me and stay consistent, then, hey, let's pull out a top five, see what we can do. Yeah. Well, it's always good to be optimistic, and um, we'll certainly hope that you have a uh, respectable result here. Any parting words as we get ready for the start of race number two? No, just glad to be back. It's always a good time, and uh, we'll see you guys later. All right, it looks like you're actually going to be rolling off in the ninth position uh, because of the disconnect or something. So good luck to T-Phrase. And uh, Kiwi Chris, you yeah. ready for to have a fun time? Oh yeah, 19 laps around this, or 18 laps around this place with cars getting loose into turn one. Let's do it. Uh, last time we raced here, with I seem to recall five cars having a massive accident at turn one. Or which series was that in? Two CVs? Oh, God, could have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember when uh, Reddit Racing did the two CV series, and we raced here in the rain, and it was a very active race. That way. Yes, yes. The whole race was one actively crashing moment, as you call it, the the dos chevaux and uh, franchise, which I probably said said wrong, but it's French. I don't think they'll mind too much. All right, looks the like everyone's ready up. Uh, all right, quick quick questions with Kiwi. Kiwi, favorite corner on this track? Uh, turn one. Least favorite corner on this track? Uh, probably turn three. That little shinky chicane because I could, ne could never get it right driver you think will gain the most spots by the end of the race? Uh, Kuda. Kuda. All right. Well, I would have said Fear yeah. the Funk because he's starting last, but that's a pretty good guess as well. Yeah. 
Remember everybody, 10 seconds of stationariness, and then we are off to the races here from sunny Miami, Florida. Yeah, where it's currently 43 degrees Celsius odds reading. Ugh, awful. It's too hot. I think it was 46 in Canada. Yeah, it's, that's way too hot for Canada. That's just nuts. Because a lot yeah. of them don't have air conditioning, so it's just brutal. Yeah, yeah. Well, we talked, Hedge Fluthy talked about it before, so... Anyway, we're about a couple of seconds away from the game loading into the track. Here we go. All right, we're going to start with Kratrum here in the Subaru Brat as he chases down other Subaru Brats. See if the Chonk can make a move. Oh, false start. Ooh. Bondo and Fluffy get away terribly. Audrex. Did four wide into one? Did Audrex jump that, or did the front row just fall asleep? I think Audrex may have gone a little early, but actually three wide into two. Let's do this, guys. Absolute send into turn one and turn two here. Audrex in the lead. Chonk at the front. Fluffy sliding. And then it just keeps getting tighter and tighter as we turn right this time. And yeah, that little bit of an incline. Oh, decline, I guess, it's going down. Well, it's a bit of a dip Ooh. and then it rises right back up, so you really don't get hmm. too much time to acclimate. Yeah, and I think that was my um, biggest issue with that corner. I never get it right because of the elevation changes. We're coming through now the infield hairpin. Yeah, that, that really does mess with your suspension. It's easy to bottom out there. and Once you're bottomed out, you're just gone. <laughs> a little bit further back in the field, slow motion fire dropping down a ways. In eighth position from, I believe, fifth. Tavarius on his bumper, and he's going for the dive. All right, slow left a lot of room there. But and we see, who's that off, off track ahead of them? That was um, Larry. Larry, yeah, Larry the Cable Guy. I don't know if you'd like that comparison or not. <laughs> no, probably not. Alright, we got slow. And now a full throttle. Yeah, this is probably the slowest oval race you'll ever see. Uh, Fluffy and Kratrium right now, side by side. You really don't want to be on the outside, because this car has so little power, you're really just losing time. Not really going to be able to take advantage of the Highline exit here, but you know, I say that, and Kratrium is faster. And he's got... Just enough room as we go into turn one. Oh, so close! Oh, there was no contact there, and I don't know how. Oh, that was a major corner cut from the uh, car on board with. CT kept lining up and one into two. Nope, not this time round. Yeah, so CT will give you the exa exactly enough room to get through and nothing more. Uh, and then Luffy took a little more room than what was on offer. Barney just had a massive send on Larry. I think he got that move. Darby's on the outside now. Yeah, this is... I don't know where to look here. There's so much stuff happening. Look back. Larry, Tavares side by side in the entry. Is Tavares going to sneak through? Maybe? No? He'll be on the inside for this next little... Kink yeah. and there he goes. Uh, he's still not clear. Not clear enough. Into the hip and now he's going to be on the outside. It's going to be hard, tough to hold it from here. We can see Larry on the inside. Is there a bit of an overlap there? Just a bit. There goes Larry. Dive bomb again. Gets the move. Done. Oh, I think we've had a disconnect or something. Anyway, uh, Battle for 7th Rage is on. It'll be Callahan, Brake Pads, Ute, Brat, Bart, Chasing Aperture Labs. Oh, look. Larry's learning SFM colors. Blue and orange. I was going to say, Larry would probably want to launch a portal and get ahead of, up to the front of this field. But I'm Tisk. All right, so we're not sure what that stutter was because all the competitors are still here. Hmm. So, okay, so the outside line does seem to be a little quicker on the front straight. I think a lot of it, though, comes down to how smooth your steering can be. You know, I've seen it a couple of times now. Like, if you tap steer and it's in qualifying, tap steering around the oval here with these cars that are so slow. Oh, Barney's off! And he's back on. And he made the corner. <laughs> That was beautiful. That was the, the smoothest recovery that could have been through there. Yeah. I think these cars don't go fast enough to have a massive incident. You have time to actually recover. Yeah. Well, it helps when you're going, you know, 30 miles an hour. This is true. Uh, up ahead, slow motion and his gaggle of merry friends. It's going to be a potential dive bomb there. 
Ooh, bumper to bumper slow motion on Larry, I think that was. So they head into the faster section of the track. There's the, that, that same sticker that's on modern weapons cars on the back of slow motion fires. I'd love to know what that is. Maybe we can ask after the race. You know, one benefit of having an oval on the track is you really can't get away from anyone. Yeah, and sure, the racing fast and tight. Um, what are we, three laps in, we're still in the same postcode, in the same sector. Well, let's think about this here. You break for turn two, not turn one. Turn three, four, six, and eight. That's it. So there's only yeah. six braking zones on this track. Yeah, and it's about 45 seconds of full throttle in a row. I think that we just saw Mondo there sneaking through on Kratram. Yep. And we see Slow Motion Fire on the outside of Larry coming to turn one. He's not going to be brave enough to hold it there. In fact, I think he's going to go much wider without having an incident. I think he just kind of let him go there. Yeah, smart move. Yeah, but Aud Meanwhile, out front, this four car battle. Yeah, Audrex has still got the lead, which he may or may not get to keep. We'll see how that folds out. And then Mondo flew through behind. Praetorium have just been overtaken by the aforementioned Mondo, who's going to get floofy now. Go Mondo! Man, he's got some speed in that grot. You know, the other nice thing about Homestead Kiwi is, if you go to cut the track, you're going to die. Yes. Because, I don't know if you can see this, but there's grass. It's not this paved runoff you get with the European tracks, it's just grass and wall. The way the way racetrack should be. Oh, well, I see. That was Criterium Criterium with a bit of a um, dent now in the front of his car in the back of Boofy's. Yeah, not, he... not quite sure what he was thinking there. Yeah, maybe he was Could channeling he, his inner Nurkzer. Yeah, but no. But at least starts to dive bombs and actually crashes, not just bumps. I feel both complimented and insulted. So it seems like when, they, when the drivers have a choice, they do stick to the inside, the, the, um, the low line. Yeah. I'm not sure how much room the outside is. I don't know if the side drafts the thing. I mean, theoretically, you should be able to, but... Oh, Floofy, big dive on Mondo, and that's going to get Kratrium right up to the back. And maybe up the inside of the black brat. For a minute, I think Kratrium is looking at both of them. Yeah, he thought about it, and then said, actually, no. Yeah. Big brain driving Indeed. there, not to cause a bigger incident. Indeed. So that puts the speedy Gonzalez thing of this DTS Mondo into third. Yeah, I don't think Kratrium's going to send it here, so let's take a look at the battle for the 10th position, which has Fear the Fun up eight spots from the beginning. Should have said Fear the Fun, Kiwi. Should have said Fear the Fun. Yeah, but that would be a boring answer. Uh, you know me, I'm not a boring character. <laughs> and we have a black screen. What's going on? We'll find out. I think, I think that's just Forza taking a minute nope. to think. That's a disconnect. That is a disconnect? Yep, we lost we Kuda. Lost? Oh. oh no. <laughs> so there goes your prediction out the door. Ah, oh, that would be the good old kiss of death I gave him. Yeah, so Modern Weapons, Sleepy, and Sprizaus all battling here for 15th position right to the rear. Still very close racing. Oh yeah. Sprizaus trying to go around the outside of the head and that ain't going to work for you, buddy. Yeah, but he might get a better launch. Oh no, he's just a little too much steering input put there. Yeah, all you need to do is light up the rear tires. Yeah, take so a look a little bit farther up here. Uh, Borna's Ghost is actually right on the back of Kratrium sure when that happened. We're missing my comms duties to notice these things. And he is looking very racy. He is. This is... I mean, after a bit of a nondescript race one. Yeah, I mean, when Warren turns on the gas, he is on it. So he could eke out a top four here. And believe it or not, we're only one-third of the way through the race today. Ooh. So two thirds more of action to go. 
And I think Gwen is going to looking at two thirds of the back of CT. Trying to go down the inside. I don't know where I was going with that segue. He's like, come here, I want to get you. Yeah. Maybe maybe he's, maybe he's got two thirds of a pizza in his suit. I don't know. I'd love to know what that flag is. Is that the uh, city of Chicago flag on the side? What, the black, red, and yellow one? Yeah. Take a look. See if that is what that is. It is. It's the flag of the city of Chicago. Surprise it's not on fire. Kiwi, please. <laughs> We're a civilized country. We don't do these things. Uh, hey, anyway. Na international incidents aside, uh, let's take a look at Ellis Barney's car. Um, delivery rules, generally speaking, are meant to run the country flag on the side. I know exceptions are made for localities or other permissible things. Like a lot of drivers running Pride things because it is Pride Month after all. So happy Pride Absolutely. if that's uh, your persuasion. Absolutely. Um, important month to recognize. Hey, anyway, well, this, this car's a great looking car. I still figure out what the livery is. Burger Mart. What is Burger Mart? Guardians of the Globe. I feel like I should know these things, but I don't. Let's take a look at the Tovarius machine. He has the flag uncovered. So we're going to assume that, that sticker is simply peel it off mid race from the high speed. Further back, Fox Jason D. US of A. Slain like green. But I, I don't think we ever actually answered that question earlier. What is the Soy Lake Green? I thought it was messed up humans, but. Messed up you oh! Ah! Ah! What is it like uh tasty or cannibalism or something? I'm gonna have to uh, It's a distinctly through of him, so. Here we go. Fluffy is oh, working hey. on Audrex, trying to get under his quarter panel, but just does not have the acceleration to make it happen. I think Audrex is going to make the, his car as chunky as his sponsor. Chionk. One thing I one thing I do like about him is just so smooth. Well, you don't get to endure a winning pace by being reckless. I'll tell you that much. True. Citation being, I have not learned enduro. Uh, so <laughs> up the inside. I have. You have, yes. Long Beach, 962. Oh, down the inside of the two. Oh, that was a massive dive bomb. Yeah, he's... No, he pushed Audrex off. To be fair, Audrex gave him no room coming through one. Or, you know, or through two. Well, he couldn't, so. he couldn't give him much room. He's a chunk. True. But I think that was all fair, and that's a good move in the end by Fluffy. Who's down to meet of his race with eight laps gone, or on the eighth lap of 18. Yeah, so we're approaching the halfway point here. The end of lap nine will be halfway for those who are uh, arithmetically challenged. And Mondo, thinking about it, he's going to sneak through easily on Audrex. That was an excellent move. Yeah, the under worked well, worked the charm. That's two spots and half a lap for Audrex. That's. That's unfortunate. It was, it was after race one, where he finished, what he finished in race one? I think he was fourth behind Greytrim. Yeah. Yeah. So now he's falling back into the clutches of Greytrim at a fast rate as well. He looked ahead and looked down the inside, or tried to go down the inside of the hairpin, but couldn't get it done. Now, as the ticker cycles through uh, Mr. Chris here, one second mm -hmm. is the gap that Fluffy has already. So he was clearly being wow. held up by all drags. Yeah. And I think he's the... I'm, I'm not sure if CT's been held up much, but I don't think any of these three have got the raw pace at the moment to match it. Yeah, this is something I, I've been trying to help CT be a little more elbows out at the starts of races. It's too nice. Sometimes he's got to send him in. Oh, there he goes, around the outside as Fluffy gets a big wiggle. Ah, okay, so there's that, there's that second margin gone. Yep, it's down to uh, nothing now. And a bit of a weird understeer moment from Creature in there is going to give Audrex a little bit of... Oh, what's, what is going on here? That elevation change wreaking havoc with the brat. Oh, battle for the lead. Here we go. Mondo and Fluffy. I feel like I've seen this movie before. 
Yeah, we definitely have. We've seen this film before. And a too wide almost to the into the in infield hairpin. And he tried to go the hard way around the outside. Oh, he's right on him. We might see a big send coming here. Don't touch my car, says Mondo. Now, this hairpin is really hard to make the outside work because it is so tight. Oh, oh hello, hello. Audrex. Audrex, just popping in there. Yeah. That was more of a cat swap, or swat, you know, for the pass. I mean, it's what, it's what cats do to me, mice, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I have a cat, can't confirm. Although we don't think she's ever actually seen a mouse. So you did see a bird once. So uh, there was a bird on a wreath on her front door. Front door opened mm -hmm. inward, bird flew into the house, cat tried to kill the bird. Bird escapes. Happiest day of her life. Oh. No, I don't know that story had a happy ending. It was not ready for animal murder at 11 May in the morning. Well, the cat was happy because she got to hunt. The bird was happy because it got to live. Mom was happy because the bird didn't die. So all, all's well that ends well in that scenario. And the cat is uh, forever more afraid of reeds. Fair enough. As we come through, we're at the halfway point now. Nine down, nine to go. Luffy's the last lap just looked really ragged. And yeah. again there he just had the tires just red tires just started slipping on him. I wonder if there's a bit more tire wear in this race. I mean the tire wear is gonna be like less than five percent at the end because they're mm -hmm. on stocks, so I I get where you're coming from, but it is not gonna matter at all. Yeah, fair. It's just the tires are rubbish to start with. Yeah, it's it's so insignificant. Like you can still throw a blanket over these top four. Huge gap being opened up. Let's take a look at the map here just to demonstrate. One, two, three, four, and then almost the entire straight back to Barney and Tavarius for P5. They're three wide. Oh, so I, three wide. I think that's born as ghosts. 61. Okay, oh, it's Larry. It's Larry. Larry. Larry's got both of them. The oh, wow. Oh, and then he gets hit off the track by Tavarius, and he's going to lose both the spots he just got. Oh, poor Larry. And that's the worst oh, spot to go off, too, because you're pure acceleration. That was, that move deserved to stick. That was a great move by Larry, and ah, that was, that was a beautiful was pass attempt. Mm. And look, it's fear the fun. Oh. Hey, you can see them. So he started yeah. in the 18th position up to the eighth position. Is fear the fun? And looking to make that another three spots. He's got the oh. Whoa, whoa! What the heck was that? Well, he has survived turn one, which I didn't think was possible. Someone clipped that. That was a beautiful recovery from Fear the Fun. My goodness. What is he doing? Well, whatever... It's still happening. There, you got the guy on the line now? Fear, are you well? Are you being attacked by a cat? try to figure this out after the race here. Anyway, uh, the battle for fifth position is still heating up with uh, Barney and Tavarius, and Larry B. The G is right there to capitalize as these two are slowing each other down mightily. It's kind of swift I think I've seen this film before. Uh, oh, this is literally going to be the same thing. Here we go. Yeah. Is Larry going to send it? Is it going to stay there? Uh, or are they going to outsend each other? Oh, late Larry's send from Larry! Here. Much, all right, Sorry, they, I don't think we went for it. Yeah, it was much cleaner this time, so I'll give them that. They kept it together. But yeah, at the end of the day, nothing boring race, no changes. Yeah, that, that, that really is part of why the starting and finishing position does not tell you the whole story. Yeah. Like, you know, the French Grand Prix couple last week, that was amazing. No change of position in the top four, but it was a thriller. Up front, Floofy 1, Mondo 2, Audrex 3, Criterion 4. They have dropped back a little bit now. I think it's like about two or so seconds, two and a half seconds. And these two, the black and white Utes, going for it. It does look like Floofy has a slightly more composed tune and or driving style. 
but Mondo, I think, has more raw one lap pace right now. He almost got him there. Mm. It, it, this is very akin to the previous race. I think Mondo's strength is those slower corners where he can take different lines, and he's not really anywhere to do that yet. So this is going to require more of a balls out dive bomb, I think, into the turn two or into the hairpins. Would you like to know the origins of that phrase, balls out? Oh god, here we go. So back when steam power was first being started, to measure the output of the, the rotational speed of the output shaft as they were using it for like oil drilling or mining or whatever, they would have mm -hmm. um, literally balls on a stick that would rotate straight up in the air. And when you were at max speed, they would call it balls out because the balls would swing around at the end of the stick at an almost perpendicular angle relative to the straight up and down rod. So that's when you knew that you couldn't be spinning any faster. Oh. So balls out that's means cannot go faster, basically. That, that's a lot cleaner than I thought the series was going to yeah, be. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a little fun technical engineering history detail. Nerd. Yeah, well. Well, one thing I was going to say, looks like these guys are not going to encounter that traffic this race with five laps or six laps to go. Life place is just coming onto the banking now, so I don't think going to have to worry too much about that traffic yeah, I mean, at all. The lap has been about a minute 40 pace. They're <laughs> about a minute back now. It's very unlikely, you're right. Yeah. So it's just a straight out dog fight between these two brats. How much would you want to ride in the back of one of these right now? Uh, I think it would be fun for about 30 seconds, and then I'd want to get the hell off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably be uh, hurling my dinner all over. As you're looking at Barney and Larry again. Now a I, bit of separation there. Now I know that was oh, a facetious question, but I did actually get to ride in the back of a monster truck as a small child. And they literally strapped you into a seat in like the bed area of the truck. It was really fun. Oh boy! It was at the old Flemington Fairgrounds track, which no longer exists, and its place is a Home Depot or a Lowe's. Sorry. Oh, uh, that's department store it? or hardware store. Oh, yeah. uh, Tavares on the inside of Larry, Larry B the G onto the in NASCAR three. Yeah, you can see Tavares is very smooth, and you can see Larry is tap steering. On an oval, tap steering is always slower, no exceptions. So that is how that pass came to be. Into turn one we go. Is anyone going to try to send it on Barney? Whoa, Tavarius! Big slide! And he's going to hang on to it, and Larry's going to get through. That was a good save from T-Man, Tavarius. Larry's had a lot of pace. He's actually got a little bit of the inside of Barney. Oh! Tavarius almost spun him. No love lost Very between these battle. two. Very winning battle here. I mean, it, it's hard. It, I wouldn't say it's disrespectful racing, but this is a bit elbows out for my taste. Oh, big cutback. Nice move, Larry. You let him through, and then he stole it right back. Robin's racing. This is fine. Yeah. In the finest traditions of beer league racing. Exactly. I'm almost afraid to... Oh, Larry hits Tavarius! Whoa. Uses him as a break. You can kind of get away with that in a car this slow. I don't know if I would uh, recommend doing that too often, but... It could work in a pinch. Take a look back through the okay. field here. Slow motion fire. Eight. Sorry, go ahead, Chris. I was going to say, don't do it on the road, for the love of God. Yeah, that's a great way to get your license suspended, no matter what country you're from. Mojave, we haven't really seen much of him in this race at all, running in 10. I think that's the uh, Danish flag on the side of that car. It is. I don't think the hour breakfast. Delicious. Okay, Fox Jason D. Running in the 11th spot, so in the green. 12th is T Phrase, started 9th, fall back just a little bit. He's got a bit of livery on that car still. 
Uh, 13th, quite a ways back, is Matt Man. We saw him battling it up last race in the 86 car from Canada. 14, Born as Ghosts. Strong opener. Uh, must have crashed at some point because he's now way down the field. Sprizaus, P15. And then Sleepy, all by himself, way at the back there. Modern Weapon has lost a lap, and that is likely due to technical difficulties. Now we say that. Uh, remember that fight we were just watching? They've got to get around Modern yeah. Weapon now. Oh, they do. Seems to have spread out a little bit as well. Barney edging out Tavarius and Larry. But that assume he's, he's a fair way ahead now as well. Who, Floofy? I oh, know. No, yeah. no. Again, the dog caught me out. I can't count. Yeah, they're, they're so close together. I can, I can forgive you for that transgression there. We might actually see a change of position here. See, we'll see how... Mondo's got to run. Look at Mondo. that. Yeah, he's got to run. But okay. I don't know if he's got enough of a run to make anything happen here. Uh, so we have to look into turn one. This might happen. Into turn one. Is he going to make contact? No, backs out of it. Smart. There was no, he had no place to go. Just like the meatloaf song. All revved up with no place to go. To turn number four we go. The right hander. Simondo sliding a little bit more than Fluffy there. That could be crucial as we get into the final two laps here. Remember, only going to the end of lap 18, not 19. And I think there may have just been an incident there. Unless that was Modern Weapon getting out, which it was. Okay. So Modern Weapon just kinda removed himself from the equation. Wisely done. Yep. It does mean this three-car battle is gonna rage onto the banking next time around. And you know that Larry has to be seething right now, because he had that pass done, and then it was taken, and they had it done again, and it was taken, and then he's off the track. And there's just the Apex by a good job. Deep breath, Larry, deep breath, you got this. Moving up ahead a little bit, Kratrium has gotten around Audrex. Or has he? He has now. Yeah, now he's got him. Love to have seen how that unfolded there. Quick, I, someone hit the rewind. Yeah. If only it was that simple. It's like that Adam Sandler movie where he's got the TV remote that controls uh, time. The name of which uh, is now escaping yeah. me. It's an Adam Sandler movie. It's forgettable. Yeah, I mean, he's had a couple. Ooh, Mondo's falling back. We missed something yeah, there. One in 1.1 seconds with two laps to go. Uh uh. Not gonna happen, my friend. That's a that's an off-track moment. I think we're too wide back for the third and fourth. I don't know where to look. Yep, Kratrium. Oh, Audrex has got around him again. Worst cameraman award yep. goes to Darkster here. Yep. I, I I feel like they went too wide into one, and Must have. CT CT was like, yeah, nah, I'm not doing this. Yep. Which is totally fair enough. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to risk throwing away a top four, especially when you have a, such a giant gap to fifth. A couple seconds worth. Hmm. I mean, personally, I would have just, you know, sent it, but I'm also a poor decision maker, so. Yeah, you, you make the. You do that, and you probably would have blown up half of Miami with the ensuing <laughs> fireball. <laughs> and considering the temperature, that might actually remove some, some heat from the equation. <laughs> Alright, so Kratrium think thinking about the send on Audrex here into the hairpin with one and a half laps to go. He doesn't do it. Run, but no, he actually broke it. Audrex actually broke it a little bit later and still made the apex, so... Here we go. He's got to run. Oh, what is happening? Oh, don't tell me. Oh, no! Forza, please. Please live. I command you. I think Forza has just crashed the desktop. Yep, that's what's happened. Okay, we're going to try to get back in for the end of the race, folks. Doing it live. Oh, no. Kiwi, can you hear me? Kiwi Chris. Nope. Can you, you hear me, Kiwi? Kiwi, can you hear me? My friend.
Hello? Can you hear me now? I can. Okay, I'm not sure what happened there. But Forza crashed the desktop on me. And then Discord stopped working. So, I think we may make it just in time for the end. <laughs> Let's go solid state uh, drive. Load, load, load. So that was... Um, Most unfortunate. unfortunate. That was shaping to a great last lap battle. Yeah, I'm... Oh, that's so annoying. Come on, let's see it. Well, these things do happen sometimes when you're dealing with uh, computers. Because the saying goes, to err is human, but to really mess things up requires a computer. And unfortunately, it was my computer's turn to do the messing up today. Alright, well, we're back in the lobby. Now we just gotta get loaded in here. I feel like the race is finished. You may be right. Oh, that is so disappointing. We just asked the drivers to reenact it. Yeah, I mean, maybe they'll oblige us. We'll see. Speedy reload, though. Yeah. Oh, just getting the end. We uh, just missed it. Oh, that's so frustrating. Uh, so it looks like Fufi did get ahead of Mondo then to finish. Oh, what was that? That's no, it's a left down car, is it's it? Mojave. Yeah, it's going to be all messed up now at the end, but, oh man. Well, at least they'll line up in order. Yeah, you got that. You got that right. So, Fufi has prevailed over Mondo. Audric, third, CT, fourth. Barney, Box, Jason D actually made a bit of a charge light, came sixth. Just getting uh oh man i don't know if these uh results are going to be accurate or not so let's see if we can get somebody from in the race now to give us the accurate results yeah good cool all right floofy's in the interview kill let's talk to him floofy pain Hello. only pain the the game quit on the last lap, who won? Uh, I, I did. There was Bondo made a mistake with what two, three laps to go that opened up enough of a gap. Oh man! So you did hang on for the end. I did. Yes. Well done, man. So that's the sweep round one. Yeah. So far, uh, they weren't easy though. So my question to you now is, who finished in second? Um, uh, Bondo. Yeah, Mondo, and then Audrex third, Kratrium fourth. And then Barney, and was Fox Jason D in sixth? As Fox the... Jason D is tenth by the looks of it. All right, so it looks like my uh, thing is not quite caught up yet. So why don't you give us the results here, just so all of us sitting at home can understand who actually uh, finished where. Kratrium here. fourth, then Barney, Tovarius, Larry, the B, Larry B the G, slow motion fire, Fear the Fun One, Fox Jason D, then 11th, uh, Mulhave, Born as Ghosts, Sprizaus, Sleepy, Matt Man, 15th, T Phrase, Kuda, and Modern. Kuda and Modern both DNF'd. Yeah, we did see Kuda disconnected earlier on, but uh, I think Modern was having some technical issues there the whole night. Yeah, he had some several types of technical issues. Yeah, well, congratulations, Floofy. Uh, it is tough to win a race, especially against a driver as quick as, as uh, Bondo there. Who? What was their previous gamer tag? I don't actually know who they are. Uh, I'm not sure. I've only ever known them as Bondo. Huh, well, maybe we'll find out. Uh, so, do you have any uh, parting wisdom for the next round you'd like to impart? Uh, <laughs> not not so far. I haven't learned much. Just uh, hanging on so far. Just hanging on. Well, keep on hanging on, man. Kiwi, you got any questions for our friend Floofy? Why are you so good? Uh, lack of life? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. As far as the Emma Queen it? shows up, I'll look less good. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is it about the, uh, this car that, made, that you enjoy driving? I don't know. It's just silly just throw it into a corner you can drift you can 
lose the rear, anything could happen, then it just sort of doesn't do anything because it's too slow. So it's actually relatively stable? It, it can be, yeah. And even yeah. when it's unstable, it doesn't have enough momentum to really get you in trouble. Oh, I think the car's an error into the Demon Edition Derby mode. So yep. you're basically saying it's so slow you can't actually crash? It, it, it's very tough, yeah. I, I don't know if you saw, I, I put the tires off the outside in turn one. And yeah, just four wheel drifted it through turn one. Yeah, it's, why not? <laughs> All right, well, four-wheel drift your way into a good weekend, man, and try to stay cool this week. Um, so we're going to try to hear from second-place finisher DTS Mondo, and uh, enjoy your victory uh, beverage, Luffy. I will. Thank you. DTS Mondo, congratulations on two second places. Uh, Mondo, if you are present, you are muted, and we cannot hear you. All right, we're going to give him a second to try that again. All right, Mondo, you got me? I can hear you. There we go. Congratulations, man. Two podiums. Great result. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so uh, I would love to know, what was your previous gamer tag before joining the DTS team? It was actually RDR Mondo. I always had uh, a clan name before Mondo, but Mondo has been the, the, common, the common gamer tag. Okay, yeah, so I just didn't recognize the name uh, in the community scene. You just kind of burst it out there and started kicking butt, so keep no, it up. I've, I've, been, I've been playing this game since the uh, first inception. Um, I just don't really do the uh, the leagues, but lately. Yeah, well, you've been doing well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so uh, we talked to Fluffy a little bit about how the car is essentially so slow you can't really crash. Was that your experience as well? My experience with the car is um, they tend they tend to be too low, so rumble strips like just braking will will slow it down. Um, like you really gotta throw the car and just go with it, and, like try to get as least uh, tire scrub as you can. Um, I found I found if I just throw the car into the corner and try not to drift the car, it seems to be the fastest. Yeah, we did kind of notice that your car was very. Uh, how do you say it? active compared to Floofy's? You were driving all over the place at Yas Marina trying to get around. Driving yeah, all over was, the place getting through the field here. Yeah, I was trying to get uh trying I was trying different lines. Uh, I knew we were uh about dead even, about third or fourth gear. So I had a little bit of play to try something new. Um it's just this car just once you get up to fourth and fifth, um they're just dead even. There's there's no really overpower powering the other car. Yeah, it, it does seem like it is a very, uh, I wouldn't say sensitive, but not the most uh, input-friendly vehicle. It, it's very active. Yes, you can't, you can't second-guess yourself on this car. Um, you'll either understeer or not go, um, or the back end will kick out on you. Yeah, well, we did see that your car was uh, a little back-end happy, so maybe you can figure out what that was and uh, try to take it to Floofy next round at Maple Valley and Lime Rock. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, Maple Valley is probably not my strongest track. Um, hopefully Lime Rock. I, I don't know. All right, well, uh, any parting words, Mondo, before we speak to Fox, Jason, D? Um, no, good racing for everyone. Um, that's pretty much it. All right, well, thanks again for stopping by, and uh, again, congratulations on the two second places. Thank you. Fox Jason D, how you doing? Hello. Hey, got... hi. how you doing, Dark Sir? All right, you got Kiwi Chris in here as well. Why, hello. So you had a uh, quiet but good run tonight in both races. Yeah, I'm actually really proud of how I did tonight, considering I... Didn't even take part in the uh, test and tune. I honestly had no idea where I where I'd stand coming into tonight. Yeah, well, it seemed like your car was uh, well under control, nice and smooth. Didn't get in any trouble. Just uh, brought it home, and uh, I think you got tenth in that second race, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah because like a uh, uh, error by E. Mulhave, literally on the final turn, I was able to pass him right there. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, my Forza quit the desktop on the last lap there, so I didn't actually see uh, any of that, but it sounds like it was a good shame. race. 
It was. Oh yeah, I had a fun race both with uh, E. Molhave, or uh, also known as uh, uh, S. D. R. Gojira, and uh, as well as like a, a longtime member who who sort of made a comeback tonight. A T. Phrase did had a good race with both of them at Homestead tonight. Yeah, we talked to T. Phrase a little bit before this race, after qualifying, and he seemed like he was having a, a jolly old time there. Um, so, Kim and Chris, oh, yeah. you've raced OK Fox, Jason D. before. You got any questions for our fine uh, furry friend here? Pun not intended. Oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, what is it about this series that you that you love racing in? Just honestly, you, what... without RFM4, I think the best thing is just they is just like some. They always go for some of the weirder cars that you rarely see. So, I mean, like. The, my very first season was like the F100 truck. So it, and we've had like Shirakos as, and something like the Brad, was Im immediately uh, drew me to, to want to do this season because, it's the Brat. I. <laughs> yeah, this is typically not something that you would see raced competitively. So I do agree, it has been very amusing thus far, <laughs> just to see it being raced. As well as it being like that, they made the spec build E class. Is also it makes for it's a it's a slow little car, but it it makes for some fun racing. Yeah, I know a lot of people were bummed out when they did the weird engine swap uh, in the Porsche. Take the V12 out for the V10. That was a little oh, weird, but yeah, the, this build seems to be pretty popular. It this is this has been fun. Like that, I would say this this along with the uh, like. Along with one of my favorite seasons, which was like the season before the the Carrera GT, the Miata was also a very fun season. So this this I I'm looking forward to this one. All right. Well, best of luck to you, Fox, as we move through the uh, event here. Next week will be Maple Valley and Lime Rock, of course. Uh, parting question to you: Which track do you think is going to be stronger for you, Maple Valley Reverse or Lime Rock Full Circuit? Ah, uh, it's hard to say. Maybe I would probably probably say Lime Rock, but that's only because I just have more experience there than Maple than, than Maple Valley. The the last time I I unfortunately I have a bad ex, bad memory with Maple Valley because in the very first season with the F one hundreds, I think it was also reverse and either reverse or straightforward. Basically, I I took a turn wrong and. And hit the hit the pit wall and completely killed my car. I was complete, and I was forced to quit out of the race. All right, well, hopefully that doesn't happen in the next race there. And um, on behalf I hope so of myself too. and Kiwi Chris, uh, hope you have a good night, man. Thank you. You too. All right, so we're gonna hear from Tovarius next. Uh, Kiwi Chris, why don't you take the first question to our Danish friend? Is that correct? I say as mm -hmm. I ask the first question and he leaves. Epic fail, Dark Sir. <laughs> Let's try that again. Tavarius, can you hear us? Yes, I am. I hit a, I hit a button like a noob. Ah, so you got me ah. and Kiwi Chris here to ask you some questions. Yeah, go ahead. All right, uh, strong results tonight. Uh, tell us about your, race, your second race here at uh, Homestead. Um, it was exciting, man. I'm a ball of sweat after running a wheel like that for all, all, pretty much all day. I, I was uh, in another uh, racing league earlier today. So yeah, uh, I feel really good. This is the first uh, uh, FM4 league race I've ever been in. Um, I, I feel like I had a pretty strong uh, finish for my first race here. And uh, I'm kind of just looking forward to moving up the ladder, you know, getting better. Um, working with whatever tunability is in this stupid Subaru. <laughs> and well, that uh, was just... Go ahead. That, that was going to be my next question. Um, what's it like driving this piece of absolute garbage? You know, I'm a, I'm, I am a fan of slower tunes. Like one of my favorite classes of cars to run is a C-class car. Um, but this is a stretch for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that there'd be, you know, the last one when I was watching, it was like a Porsche Carrera, right? And I'm like, oh, all right. It should be something comparable, something decent. And then I heard Floofy at the last race talking about how he wanted to run something slower. And I was like, oh, that might be kind of interesting. And then I saw this and I'm like, man, he is sadistic. <laughs> I, I've raced enough with him, Nick. Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah, the, the man is just on another level. 
No, it's fun. It's uh, they are a challenging car. They they roll around, you know, the, and they can take quite a lot of damage. You know, uh, Barney and I were kind of duking it out uh, throughout the both races, kind of. And uh, you know, I kept checking my damage report, kept checking my damage report, and the car held up the whole race. So, so um, I have a little interjection here, and then we'll get back to the questions. Uh, apparently, yeah. Audrex did not jump the start in race two. Uh, the front row simply both stalled. Oh, um, is that what it was? Because I yeah. saw. I saw movement and then I just went because I like I saw Audrex kind of and uh, it, see because I, I kind of like if someone jumps I have kind of been guilty of also going because I'm just looking for any movement at all before I release my clutch. Yeah, I mean you really do just got to watch that clock and as soon as you see the ten, bam, yep. go for it. Yep. Well, it depends too because isn't it like they can start at any time between ten and twenty seconds, right? Say again. Yeah, so they drive. they can start the race in between ten and twenty seconds. So after the ten seconds, it's oh, up to the first place driver. You're right. Right, right. And so that's what the challenging part is: is you don't know when it's actually going to launch. And yeah. I actually got this crossed up in my other uh, my other league race, and they left at ten seconds, and I'm like sitting there waiting for like eleven twelve. I'm like, why is everyone going at ten? <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I actually completely forgot that they had that discretion part there. That's yeah, a good. That's a good call out. Challenging. Yeah. No, it makes it really challenging when you're in the back. You know, I mean, I was only in like fifth and sixth and seventh. I think the second race I qualified eighth or ninth. <clears throat> and so I had a good view of the fur of the front, but I couldn't imagine being further back in the field and trying to see when the race was starting. It'd be a it'd be a pain in the butt. Yeah. Well, great racing tonight. Uh, hopefully, you and Larry B. The G can uh, avoid each other's bumpers next week. Uh, any parting words no before we turn off everything tonight? <laughs> Uh, just that I had a lot of fun, uh, and I'm really looking forward to uh, to doing this season and uh, seeing how I how I do and how I progress. All right. Well, best of luck to you, Tavarius, and uh, hopefully we'll see you here in uh, some other leagues that myself and Kiwi have been known to party around with uh, over the next coming weeks and months. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. And then my final question to you, Kiwi, Chris, what are your thoughts on today's event, or tonight's event, I should right, say? Right, right. Uh, today for me. Great racing. Absolutely brilliant. These cars are going to be a lot of fun. I know they're a piece of garbage, but they're going to be great fun to drive and watch some of the best drivers we have on Forza take them around. Yeah, I, I was really impressed. Uh, the racing was a little scruffy, but still uh, cleaner, than, yeah. cleaner than it should have been in Super Brats. So I'll take that and uh, props to the drivers for hanging all out there and having a good time. And once again, thank you so much for joining me. No problem. Happy to be here. All right, well, if you uh, just tuned in for any of that, that was the first week of the 41st season of FM4 Spec Racing. Thanks again to Slow Motion Fire for allowing us to do this, to CUDA93 for the graphics, and to you, the viewer, for tuning in. Uh, and my final thanks is to Kiwi Chris for uh, getting up early on a Wednesday morning in Australia and doing this with me. And no problem at all, Doc. Thank you very much for hosting, and we'll see you next time. All right, and once again, this has been an SFM official broadcast. Have a great night, everyone.